Hey guys, how's it going? Capran here. Today I want to talk about a game I've been, like, brutally addicted to. Not for a very long time, but still, it's not a feeling I get too frequently with games these days. So, I thought I would honor it by telling you guys uh, how great it is and all the things that I've enjoyed and all the things that I think are right about this game. And of course, the game is Darkest Dungeon. Now, this is... Uh, a pretty simplistic game. There aren't too many, like, uh, you know, graphics or anything like that. It's basically kind of like an indie game. People would recommend it that I try it. I tried it on Steam, and, uh, you know, some people didn't really like it. I tried to play with Anya, and, you know, she didn't like it too much, so, okay, we left it alone, but uh, honestly, after just playing it a little bit that first day, uh, I kept thinking about it. I, I looked up some videos, I looked up, like, some strategy and stuff. And I realized just how cool and complex the game is. And, um, well, you know, the main downside is that it's kind of like a 20-hour type of game, maybe 30-hour type of game. So it kind of fits into the more modern type of game where, um, you know, people play a game for like a day or two, three, maybe a week if they play it just a few hours a day. Um, and, you know, that's kind of what they expect. But uh, that, that's a little bit of a downer. But the, the really good thing is... Um, this game is kind of like a, it's like a turn-based RPG, but it really reminds me of like really classic Flash games like on Newgrounds and other websites like that. You know, some of them were really well done. This is like, this is like the champion of those games, you know, it's absolutely the best in every single possible way, but it's still that type of like grindy strategy, you know, really difficult type of game. So. Uh, yeah, as you guys can see in the background, kind of how things play out. Usually things are not going to be as fast-paced, but I've played the game for uh, enough time that I kind of understand all the concepts. I kind of understand how things run through. And, um, you know, there's, there's a bunch of different classes and stuff. I'll show you guys the specifics in a second. But first, you know, I just want to tell you guys what makes this game great. So this is a game that, um, although this may be seen as a downside, I think it's kind of an upside. Uh, it's really brutally hard at the start, especially if you get a bit unlucky. Like I saw, I saw like a YouTuber uh, start like reviewing the game. They were just do like they already played the game a lot, and then they were doing a new run to like teach people how to play. And in the tutorial, he got crit three times and died. You know, so that's that's like hilarious because this is a game where you know it's like uh, auto save ongoing. So if you screw something up, if you die, well, you're screwed. It's brutal in that sense. Uh, and at the start, where you basically have nothing, it's really hard to really get started. So the game is, um, will be known if, if it isn't already uh, for being brutally hard. But as you progress, as you play the game, the game actually gets easier and easier because you upgrade the town and that kind of stuff. And I'll show you guys how to do that in a moment. So, uh, you know, it, it has that, like, notoriety to it. Um, but the progress feels really good when you level up the characters, you feel them getting stronger. Even though you may not be getting too much better at the game, you are, you know, progressing in some way, and that feels really good. Um, one thing that I don't really like about the game is a lot of it has to do with, like, knowledge. Um, so I know some people really like this, you know, where they like to, like, fail, and then it, like, screws them over, but next time they remember how to do it. Well, they have like a wiki page for this game, so I mostly read up on that, and that's really why I got into the game. I realized how complex it was. On some end, I kind of ruined it for me myself a little bit, because I could have experienced cooler stuff if I had tried and failed a bit at the start. And uh, man, would I have been punished for it, because again, at the start of the game, you're really punished for your mistakes. Um, there's a lot of adventure, there's a lot, a lot of wild stuff that can happen, there's a lot of RNG. Um, and, uh, you know, the game is basically, you know, you hire little mercenaries, uh, you level them up, um, you get them like gear and stuff, you get them skills, and through many different ways you try to maneuver through dungeons to complete certain tasks, and these tasks reward you with um, items and ways to improve the town. And, uh, you know, I'm not going to go over the board too much, you guys can, can feel that out, but it feel, it's a really good feel-good game. That's the other aspect that I really like, where, you know, the voice in the background is so cool, the theme is so consistently awesome and dark, and it just feels really good, it's brutally hard, and it's one of those, like, knowledge games. If you know everything, the game is a lot easier, so if you don't know anything, the game is painfully hard. I think all these things combined are going to make it just a very well-received, very good game. Uh, it hasn't been officially released yet, they're still coming up with more classes, still adding content to the game, and that's pretty good because uh, right now the game is awesome, but there's just not 
a whole lot there. You can't play this game like forever. Okay, so let me show you guys what I got here. So uh, you guys saw some of the gameplay uh, in some of those runs. Uh, like in one of the runs, I just I just got my heroes back. So these are your heroes here. I have a lot. I have a lot of them. Okay, level six is the max. I've obviously played this game for a while. Um, the idea is when you start the game, you have few heroes. You have few ways to get heroes. In fact, you get heroes through the stage coach. So every time you come come to town, returning from a mission, you'll have new heroes here. And normally you start with like two, and then you can upgrade the stage coach to have you know a maximum of seven heroes, and then you could increase your roster so the many the number you can have at any given time. Uh, and these you know these get recruited at level zero, and it's good to have these even if you have a lot of teams because sometimes they have like rare traits. So you guys can see what I mean here. So this one here, if I want him, he's free. He just he just joins the party if I want him. Uh, so he has 10 accuracy versus unholy, 3 crit versus unholy, this is slayer of unholy, this is like a positive quirk, and then there's negative quirk, so there's like good and bad things. So minus 3 crit if HP is below 50. So this guy's okay, but he's nothing exceptional, and I already have uh, that type of class. There's quite a few classes in the game, there's probably going to be more pretty soon, probably more by the time a lot of you guys end up watching this video, so I'm not going to go over quite all of them, just some of the cool ones I've experienced. So. Once, once you do that, you can get some dudes there. Once your guys level up, you can um, you can level up their uh, armor and weapon, but first you have to upgrade these things. And to upgrade these things costs like these these crests, these deeds, these portraits. And really in the first like few hours, maybe several hours of the game, you're really just farming to get the basic upgrades. And the basic upgrades you should get, you should get first uh, maybe getting like um, three or four heroes every time you visit the town and uh, maybe upgrading like the blacksmith stuff because it's pretty significant. I actually just returned from a mission so I'm going to upgrade my gear here. So I'm going to take this guy, I'm going to upgrade his weapon from a white one to a green one. The damage goes up, the crit goes up, the speed goes up and his armor uh, gives him health and dodge. And I'll just do that for all the four heroes that are just uh, coming back from their uh, returning mission. And I'm able to do this because they just leveled up, so they have that. They also have skills, and the guild controls the skills. And uh, in the guild, it's same idea. You know, you have to um, you have to pay these badges, and it's pretty expensive at the start of the game to be able to upgrade the skills of your characters. Uh, of course, you can only upgrade them once you level them up. But they just came back from a mission; they just leveled up. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna level up chop. I'm gonna level up revenge. I'm gonna level up just all the skills that that they use on all the characters. Uh, at the start of the game, you're going to be really screwed on gold, but after you've upgraded town, after you have, you see these, this thing is like, where is the cost? So every, every single building has this. So every utility function, after you play the game enough, is going to cost you a lot less, and this is essentially going to lead you to have a, a huge surplus of gold at the end. Um, so if we look at like a character sheet, I can kind of show you what a, what a fully decked out character looks like. Uh, this isn't fully decked out, but I can I can begin to show you. So he has the positive quirks, he has deadly, amateur weapons is useless, and that's kind of okay, versus beast, and plus two speed. Speed is a really interesting stat that I'll talk about in a second. Uh, and then some of the uh, the downsides, sometimes they really suck, and you have to get rid of them, and I'll show you that in a second. So minus 20 stress resist in warrants. The stress mechanic is a very powerful one. Uh, go over that in a second. Prone to stealing items. So I really hate this thing. He just came back from a mission. I'm actually... Um, I'm actually going to not bring him in the next mission. Whenever you want to like heal or remove a bad quirk, if you want to remove a bad quirk, you can um, put him in the sanitarium, which is like the insane asylum, and I can get rid of kleptomaniac. I don't like kleptomaniac because he steals my crap. So if I get like a good item or something, he might just steal it. He's a little, a little bit of an asshole that way. Um, and whenever you put him in one of these things, or when you put him to recover stress, um, it takes like one mission cycle until you can use the character again. So it's good to have two different teams. That's why I have so many characters. Um, so th that's the quirk mechanic. Uh, the quirks happen, you know, sometimes when something really bad happens to them, or if you get lucky, or just at the end of a mission, sometimes you just get some pretty cool quirks. Um, the HP, you know, pretty simple stuff. The, the armor base, I guess, uh, is your HP. Uh, dodge is basically uh, something that goes against their uh, accuracy. So if you have really high dodge, if you have like 50 dodge, you have 100 accuracy, they'll miss you half the time. Um, protection, I don't really know how this works. Uh, you just take less damage. I don't know. Uh, speed, speed is a really interesting stat. 
Uh, speed just dictates who attacks first um, in like a group versus group of battle. Uh, and I've actually found that speed is a very powerful stat because most of what you do in this game is you run through missions and you fight really shitty monsters. If you have uh, a group with low speed, what will tend to happen is the opponents, even though you one-shot like every single monster, let's say, they will get the attack on you first. Um, so even though, even let's say, uh, one for one, one of your characters one-shots one of their characters uh, every single time, if all your characters are slower than all of their characters, you're going to get attacked four times, right? But if your characters did, let's say, like, half the damage, half, which is like ridiculously less, uh, but attacked first, you, you could kill two of their guys before they attack you. So you'll only get two receiving attacks. So you kind of have to see it that way. And uh, speed is one of those like more complex things. Um, the order of attacks is really important. And um, especially for this little guy, the man at arms, it's very important. So man at arms has one of the most overpowered skills in the game. It's called retribution. And retribution, uh, he attacks, he does not very high damage, but then he marks himself, which is like, uh, a higher threat target. Some monsters don't respond very well to the added threat, but some do. Some will almost always attack him because of it. But generally, he'll get attacked, especially because he's the, you're going to put him as the frontline character. So he's going to get attacked at least like half the time. And when he gets attacked, he does like a Riptos, which is like a counter attack. And the counter attack gets significant damage bonuses. So even though this character is a pretty slow one, one of the these are the two items that you can have on your character. One of the like most most broken items that I've, I've seen for him, even though I have like, you know, all the legendary items, all, all, like every item I could possibly ask for, I'm using a blue item because it gives him 8 speed on the first round. So when, when combat starts, because of the 8 speed bonus, even though he's naturally a slow character, he, he's going to attack first almost every single time and he gets the 10 crit on the first round and it's actually a bonus that he loses speed on the second round. So um, the, the, the Retribution Riptos uh, buff, that lasts until he attacks again. So um, he attacks first, and it's almost always going to be before the opponents attack at all. So he gets to put up his buff to retaliate before the creatures can attack him. And uh, when the second round starts, he will go last. So he basically gets to activate his Riptos buff for the first two rounds, and then if there's only like one or two creatures left, it's better to not use Retribution, it's better to just finish it off with a powerful attack like Crush. So this item is like ridiculously good, and there's a lot of these like like, like small nuances that you'll really realize and notice as you plan out your characters, plan out your group setup, and uh, realize what's really strong. Uh, and then I have like a tough ring on them. Some, more, some other characters are really just basic, like the healer is really powerful. Group heal, sing a target heal, um, whatever. And then we have, um, yeah, just heal stuff. Um, I like to play with Torchlight Zero. Um, when you're going through a dungeon, you start with 100 Torch, which makes it so your characters aren't surprised. And, uh, you know, it's just like a safe way of playing. But if you, uh, if you don't activate any Torch and it goes to zero, you have, like, huge extra um, chance to crit, extra loot. Um, but the monsters have a chance to surprise you, and they do a lot more damage to you. Um, but, yeah, I like to play on the no torch mode, so some items uh, are also really good, even though, you know, this is just a rare item and I can have any item at my disposal. I'd use something like this because 20% uh, damage, 10 accuracy, that's always active, is going to be extremely powerful. And in fact, I think I have another one of those on this character. So, you know, if, you, if you're like smart with your items, you don't really need the best items. So really, this is like a knowledge type of game that, that really, really hits well. Um, so if you guys have seen some of the stats here, so you have like the level, this is like a level 2 character, but also you have these stress points here, see so stress 46 out of 200. So the stress bar is like a double overlapping thing, and once your character hits 100 stress, um, they're going to often get like a really, uh, really bad state. Uh, usually the bad state is like they're like really annoyed, and as the fights progress, they like, uh, you know, punish your group. They make it stressful for the other people in the group and it gets a worse and worse situation. So uh, the best the best thing to really do is to have characters with high speed with a reasonable crit so you're not receiving many attacks um, and to, you know, kind of countermeasure this, this stress pretty well. Uh, if your character, you know, returns to town and has like a lot of stress, none of these really have a lot of stress, but let's say she had like 80 stress. Oh, she doesn't like this place. 
uh, in town, she'll only visit the brothel. So if she wants to be cured of stress, we'd have to sit her out in one mission cycle to uh, you know have her recover. But I'm not going to do that. She is, she is fine. At 40, it's fine. Uh, when your group takes a crit, you, you take a lot of stress damage. But when you do a crit, your group gains, um, and, you know, they, they remove stress. Also, camping removes stress. Um, and uh, it's not too much, but camping also has very significant buffs. So camping is some missions. See, if, if we see Embark here, I'm not actually going to do a mission. You get saw some of the missions, um, you know, in the intro there. But uh, if we see some of this, so this is a short. Short it does not involve camping, but some of the some of the other missions might. So this one involves two camping. So two camping, they give you like a log, and with the log you can. Um, you can like rest, and when you rest, you can buff your characters. You have 12 uh, respite, I think they call it, and with this you can uh, associate buffs. So even though some characters are stronger than others in the field, others are just really good in the camping situation. And I think the best one is, uh, again, the man at arms, uh, probably why he's so overpowered. So you can, these are his camping skills. Um, when you, whenever you get like a character, he has just the base camping skills may not be the ones you want, so if you want a different one, you can you can unlock them through this thing. I think this is the only one that I haven't upgraded yet. Yeah, that, that's the, the last upgrade in the entire town that I need. 96 of the, um, 96 of the, the crests. So, whenever whenever he goes camping, and um, I have a man at arms, I can give my entire party 10 dodge. I can give uh, one of the most powerful DPS classes uh, a huge DPS buff, and I can give himself a huge DPS buff. And because of the Riptos mechanic, uh, with the retaliation skill and the speed manipulation that I use, this is actually extremely powerful as well. He is one of the main damage dealers, even though he's a tank, even though he's super tanky and basically invincible. So with 12 respite, I, I honestly I use nine of it through him in almost every single group that I have. So yeah, he's he's pretty ridiculously overpowered, but that's okay. That's okay. It's really cool. You also have different mechanics, a chance to resist stun, blight is like a different type of bleed, and there's also bleed, um, then there's like disease, move resist, this is an interesting one, so some characters are deceptively strong or deceptively weak because of their ability to move, so you have your characters in a row of four, and each skill dictates on how they can use their skills, so if you see here crush, the two uh, yellow dots means that he can only attack uh, from the first two positions out of the four, and it only can target the first three positions of my opponents. Um, so some characters are very restrictive on attacks, for instance, like the Leper. Uh, every single skill, he has to be in the first two positions, and he can only move um, He can only move in the lineup forward one, uh, while the Man at Arms and some others can move forward two. So if, if you get, like, surprised or he gets knocked back, which is why the move resist might be relevant, uh, he'll be useless for a few turns, which is really, really bad. That's like the worst thing ever. Then you have chance to disarm a trap, chance to not be debuffed, and death or resist. So when you hit zero health, you're on death's door, and every time you take damage, you have a chance to survive and not die. So his chance is 67%, which is the baseline. You can increase it to 100%, but once you... Um, once you are like on that near death situation, what happens is you take like a lot of stress. So if you take stress to like 100, your party's like screwed. People will refuse to like attack and stuff like that. And once you hit 200 stress, the 200 stress, your character dies of a heart attack no matter what. So some characters I mentioned are deceptively powerful. Um, what I've learned is that probably uh, one of the most um, like underwhelming characters that actually is extremely powerful. Um, is the Bounty Hunter. Um, he has 100% move resist, and if he's surprised, he can move two. He can um, he can attack from almost every single position with a few attacks. The Flashbang is 165% uh, stun, so if a monster has like 100 stun resist, 65% of the time you'll still stun them. Um, he can reposition the enemies from the back, not allowing them to use certain attacks and his uh, baseline attack is ridiculous. So it does double damage against marked targets and has a crit bonus of nine, which is ridiculous. So the Bounty Hunter is one of the most powerful units. Um, and another really powerful unit is the Jester. Uh, the Jester is kind of like a support unit. Uh, he's fairly positionally limited. 
Um, but he's just really cool. Uh, this buff makes it so you can buff the speed, crit, and accuracy of your party. It stacks. You can have up to three stacks, I believe. And it makes it so, you know, whenever you have a more difficult fight that goes past the first round, uh, your characters will all attack first. And that's a really big deal. Um, and also, he has a move three. So he can move, like, literally all across. If it's, like, a really... You have to keep in mind, like, one... If he goes really out of position and others really go out of position, his ability to move three is not only a bonus for himself, but moving in any spot you want on the entire board essentially moves other units into position. So if like um, if this guy who can't move like at all moves into third position and can't activate at all, and the gestures move from back to first, moving the jester from first to the back moves this guy up one position. So um, you know there's there's just so many things that you have to learn about to be good at the game. I've educated you guys in a lot, but uh, you'll probably forget quite a bit. And if you guys do want to explore um, this very complex, this very cool game, this like upside versus downside, you know, do I want this, but I have to suffer this type of game, nothing is free and really, really difficult to start. Um, you know, it's not a game that I'm going to play too much longer because at this stage of the game I've done basically everything. But my brief adventure in the game has been amazing. It's been very, very enjoyable and awesome and very addictive. So I wanted to share with you guys my experience. And, well, if you got some time to kill, if you're the type of person who wants to play these type of games or if you're the type of person who wants to play a game for, like, two days and then find something else to do, don't miss this one. Check it out. Hope you guys enjoy it. That's the good stuff.